Chris, what's up, man? Hey. What's up, buddy? Just battling terrible weather and, you know, equipment that doesn't want to cooperate. Oh, you mean like clouds? There's no such thing as clouds in Central Florida. No, man. It's been the greatest year, you know, 2023 anyway. But so far, it's off to a rough start in 2024. Uh, uh, it's uh, not just us. Many other people I've seen in other countries are saying the same thing. Um, my apologies again, by the way, uh, since I bought two scopes last year and kind of boofed the entire year. So I'm looking at, well, yeah, I'm looking at the camera into your eyes and apologizing. Hopefully you'll accept. <laughs> oh, my defense. I bought a new one as well this year. Okay. Fair. Fair enough. <laughs> We're that, fair. Uh, We're fair. I, I bought two big ones. So, you know, that had to equate to a lot of cloudage. So speaking of cloudage, man, um, this week. Let me open up Astrospheric real quick. Here we go. Tomorrow, Monday, the 19th, it looks like we're going to have some clarity, man. Um, it looks like we're going to have clarity, shoot, starting as early as 5, 6 o'clock. And then the wind speed yeah. are going to be a little rough, but they'll, they'll come all the way down to, where did I go? Roughly around seven, eight o'clock, we're looking at seven, six, seven mile per hour winds, man. So I think we're going to be all right, especially with the the big wind tube sure, behind me, you know, because that thing is super sensitive. And um, speaking of being sensitive, uh, our trip to Keenansville, all the pictures. I'm Chris. <laughs> our trip to Keenansville. <laughs> Uh, was a success for you and your uh, your new little piece of equipment, but it was a total bust for me because it turns out I had too much weight on my scope and not enough counterweight. And it looks like I just weighed my, my scope. I swear it was at least 26 pounds. The other night I weighed it with everything on it, which isn't much, not including a camera. It's at 31 pounds, but with the... Uh, the Canon 5D Mark III, it's at 33 pounds. So, yeah. Okay. And I just added <clears throat> from the old, uh, for those of you that know, don't know, this is a, uh, a Mead Starfinder. It's an old 10-inch scope. Um, some of you might have complaints, but once you can actually um, upgrade it, argue, arguably it's actually a sweet rig because it's got a 4 Point five aperture and f4.5 aperture mirror so my goal of course is to take the cheap route and try to make this thing work so far i bought the scope with the old equatorial mount that has a motor drive for 200 bucks but clearly i have can't see it i swapped them out for a bresser exos 2 which is actually the equivalent of the LXD, the Mead LXD uh, 75. A lot of research into this. Uh, apparently, this mount can hold up to about 30 pounds. So I'm pushing it just a little bit. But yeah. right now, I've got that little guy right there. That little black counterweight is 24 pounds itself, which is ridiculous. And then it it's default uh, nine pound weight. So I brought it actually to equate. 33 pounds as a scope with all its gear on it. Um, anyway, regardless, uh, our trip, uh, we're from central Florida, by the way, folks. So our trip recently to Keenansville was kind of a bust for me because I had all sorts of mount issues unless I was taking pictures yeah. of the more pronounced stars. I did get some fragments of the horse head nebula, but it was okay. It could have been better. The more you zoom in, the more disappointed you become. <laughs> in my shot but uh dude tell us about your pictures I, that you took with your uh your seat I, <clears throat> before i get there i'm gonna stop you there it was yeah. not a total bust for you sir you got out you got to hang out with someone and the stars were immaculate you know what you're what right what else could you ask for to start with to start well, with it was more like a therapy session man i mean we're talking exactly a low mid Bortle four in Keenansville. Um, honestly, right. Some people would think, why are you giving your spots away? But there's plenty of room <laughs> to do Astro. And they don't know what part, they don't know what part of Keenansville. Exactly. That's the tricky thing. Later on, you'll find out, but um, you guys will have to follow us to see where we're going. Exactly. We won't spill the, the, the beans too far. Um, 
Right, right. But it wasn't our first trip out there, but it's our first trip in over a year. It was probably, for both of us together. It was probably one of our more clear trips until eleven o'clock hit and all them freaking clouds. That huge blank in a cloudage, man. It was depressing, man. But, Just I mean the last the last time we went out there, we went out with tents. You went in the tent because it's cloudy. Right. So I sat there, I waited. Twelve forty five, one o'clock, I'm shaking your tent until you wake up, clouds are gone. <laughs> Ours are out. Someone's gotta be there for us. Um, but no. It was a great trip. I went out there. I have new toy, nothing special. Y'all might have seen it. Sle- uh, ZWO Select or C Star S50 mm-hmm. worked phenomenal. I got targets of Thor's Helmet Nebula. I did get a little bit of the Flame Nebula uh, Pleiades as well. Right. I got. I still got to work on some of the pictures of that, but I need more <laughs> integration time on it. I did bring out my big boy over here. You can't see it yet because it's just off screen. It's a Celestron Nexstar Evolution 8 inch. Right. Um, F- F10 2000 um, focal length. Right. So, I mean, it's a be still learning it. I know they're really getting into astrophotography with it. I really got to get a wedge to offset the all as mount. Right. Yes, all as mount because you really need an equatorial mount like he has on his right there just so it can follow the rotation of the Earth. But if you don't have that mount, if you have an all ass mount, the wedge is the way to go instead of having to fork out so much. Depending on what you got, though, right. you know. So, heck, we're it's a learning that? process. We're, we're huh? you that people are putting sea stars on uh on equatorial mounts now. Yes, that I'm is like, insane. <laughs> I mean, you still got to polar align it like with anything, but right. any equatorial <laughs> mount set your altitude and all, you're golden. Very cool. You know, it comes with 10, 20, and 30 second exposure lengths in there. With the 30 second, you're going to get the star trails unless you have that equatorial mount. You get none. Okay. So, unfortunately, so, you and I live, what, an hour, hour and a half away from each other. So, it's not like we right. could still hang out and do this in our backyard. But um, right. I want to say this week, I do have two events at two schools. I'm doing a little public outreach with, uh, something we call a STEM bus. And essentially it's a bus that comes to schools and there's a lot of science uh, related outreach and just a lot of learning for kids. And I actually volunteered to bring a telescope out so kids can see Jupiter, kids can see the Pleiades, kids can see the Orion Nebula, you know, which is really awesome. Um, My goal is to rush home and just pull this rig right out and have it ready set up on casters to just go because (sighs) You already know what I've been through with this mount, man. I went, I've been oh, yeah, yeah. removing it from its old crap mount, which it's not crap, but I mean, you need an equatorial mount to get the full, take a full advantage of the scope. So, oh, you do. I had printed, where is it at? I can't point in the right direction. I had 3D <laughs> two brings to save uh, $300. Um, I 3D printed the knobs in the back. I can't do this. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> I you need a laser the, pointer. I know. I printed the, <laughs> the knobs on the back. Actually, hold on. I'll give you a quick demo. But 3D printed the knobs because they're actually um, mostly held up by uh, uh, freaking the smallest of screws, man, to do anything. Uh, wing nuts. And any time you would move the wing nut just slightly, the whole mirror would shift abruptly. So with this allowing you full, full grip, it allows you to actually have a lot more smoother um, movement and motion. So you could actually fine tune it. And uh, I mean, I, I've been 3D printing all sorts of stuff to my heart's content. That's that's the beauty about 3D printing, man, is we can just, we don't have to buy almost everything, but we can save a couple bucks and and get something almost on demand. Not quite, 3D oh. printing is pretty slow on my end because I have two Ender 3 V2s, but I mean, they do the job, man, so far, so um some of you are probably and, wondering this guy 3d printed two rings for a 33 pound scope it works yeah i, I will attest it does. <laughs> it works the and it's only pla but the tensile strength on this thing will hold up several hundred pounds i'm not going to try that i'll go as far as 33 pounds but i mean it's been good i mean you hear the cricks and creaks but that's because it's held up by all sorts of hardware so it's been good that, that- 
that gives it like flavor. It's unique. That noise is one of a kind. Yeah, and if it falls while once you, we're out in the field, then I'm good. It, it probably won't cost too much. Exactly. So, but once you learn the creaks and all, and you start to hear different ones, that's when you know you have problems, like you did with your mouth the other night or yes, two weeks ago. Ticking sound. So I only yes. had, thing, you know, like I said, I thought I had 26 pounds. So I figured, okay, a 24, you know, pound counterweight. There's Winnie. There's my puppy. That black 24. Uh, where is it? 24 pound counterweight i figure okay that's not terrible that's good but i was off actually by nine pounds so now that we that makes a difference yeah i did um i checked it in the garage and i put my ear literally to the uh stepper motors and i didn't hear any clicking or fussing or nothing so unfortunately we can't test it this weekend because the weather sucks Uh, but like you said starting tomorrow through thursday my night's good my goal is to honestly, you know, I've been dying to get the horse head nebula, man, since I got oh, I know. Sound scope, actually, that's sitting in the garage. But even that thing on the wedge is actually having some interesting issues. But that's another time. That's another video. We'll discuss it Um, right now this week. By the way, if you're looking at a sea star, folks, picks up horse head, no problem. Just I so you know, must be nice. Must be great. You know me, man. I have to work my ass off to actually reap some kind of reward, and I have to struggle with it at first. You remember Frankenscope? Uh, how can I forget Frankenscope? Frankenscope is still in the garage, and uh, he's just sitting. I've got the OnStep program on it, but oh. I just, I'm having a hard time mastering it. But regardless, that's another so. project for another video. Um what you call While it? While we're on talking about our scopes, yeah. Besides the Celestron I have over there, its name is Timmy. I'll explain another video why later. Why it's called Timmy. Uh-huh. I have the Sea Star. Its name is Jimmy. Its name is Jimmy. If you see <laughs> South Park reference there, we'll get in that. But <laughs> but if you've seen the movie, you'll know what this reference is from. This little Celestron I have here. That's cool, man. Its name's Jeff. What's his name? It's Jeff. <laughs> his name's Jeff. His name's <laughs> Jeff. Anyway, man. Uh, <laughs> uh, this week, my goal is to target what you call it. Um, the horse head. You know, um, I want some damn redemption. And uh, the Pleiades right. is on my, on my uh, list as well, man. As, ever since the scope has been clicking and clacking with the wrong offset weight. So, um my goal, I'll be taking pictures, I'll send them to you, man, and then we can just cross edit or something and then put them okay. Video, so here we are. I uh, mine, I'm looking at, I'd like to get more time lapse pictures just to get that rolling. The only problem with that is my view I get really is southeast, which is great for Orion right. and all that, but it's also facing a major city, so it does. <laughs> Bring out the light a little more, not so much stars, but I'm going to put in one of my light pollution filters next time. Okay. That way that'll help. Um, other one, I really haven't figured out what I'm going to target really yet. Okay. I, so, we need to get you any back ideas? To restaurant, man. I know. But I I, I'm still waiting for my leg to fully heal. Yeah, I know. Chris walking said, um, this beast down the stairs, not so great. Right. Had a couple almost spills out there. Chris Don't said, jump out of a um, golf cart. Chris had a recent accident with his leg. Something about snapping his leg off someone's ass. I don't know. <laughs> but, <laughs> uh, I fractured it up there. Right. So don't mess with Chris. <laughs> but anyway, bro, um, I'll I'll reach back to you within the week. Um, All right. Other than that, uh, holler if, if you're going to be outside, because more than likely I'll be outside. Um, it's supposed to be actually cool out. Shut up for you got for you northerners. It's gonna be like forty five degrees outside. We're hey, hey, hey. I'm fat. I'll take I'll take the cold weather. I only got a dad gut, bro. That's all I could do. I mean, I got a sweater, but you know. You know, I got the whole Jack Black look going on. I got the gun to <laughs> yes. go with it. You're totally Jack Black right now. <laughs> but anyway, um, all right, my man. I will all right, sir. Posted, like I said, a horse head. The Pleiades, I mean, of course I'll do the Orion Nebula. My for some reason, of course, the Orion Nebula photo always comes out well <laughs> for me. Right. 
But well, I it's an easy beginner target. It's so bright. Easy beginner easy. target, but I'm kind of done being a beginner for now. So I've got two scopes. You know, I got the Celestron CPC 1100, which is more of a planetary scope. Although I've heard people do deep space with it, and then right. I've got the Starfinder behind me. So I think we might be on to something. I'm not a ZWO camera guy yet, but I've heard a lot done with just a 60D, a Canon 60D, and a 5D. Mark. Right. So we'll see where this goes. All right. Stay Got tuned, guys. Good. Watch where we go. Stay tuned and glad to have you here. All right, man. We'll see you. All right. Take care, dude. Later. Later, brother.